Hi, in this video, we are going to deploy a machine learning model that we built using Python Flask framework. So this is a multi-class text classifier machine learning model that we built in our previous video. We are going to take it, we are going to bundle it with a Flask application and expose it as an, a service endpoint. In case if you have not seen my model training video, basically we trained this model from scratch and if you have not seen it you can click the link on the top or see the video description below but it's not mandatory for you to watch that video i will explain what we have done as i am walking through the flask application but it's always good to know and also the model files that i'm going to use if you want to practice this flask application i will put it in my video description as well as video comments you can download the model files there are two model files one is the tfidf vectorizer pickle file and second is the xgboost booster file uh, with both the links i will provide you can download it and you can run it and you can practice the flask application on your own so let's get started so we are going to build a flask application but before getting to the flask application we need to install some packages for this particular model to be deployed so if you are deploying within a container docker container you bundle all your uh, dependencies within the container but here i am going to run it in a virtual machine first so let's me show you what are the packages that need to be installed i have created a file called requirements.txt you can see on the left hand side so if i click on this this are the different uh, package that I need in order to for me to deploy and run this model. So I have Flask, which is the framework I am going to deploy on. I have Scikit-Learn. Uh, basically, the TF-IDF vector is from the Scikit-Learn. I have XGBoost. I have NLTK. I have Joblib. Right, these are the packages. Now, the requirement.txt file, you can run it with this command, pip3 install or pip install, whatever like uh, where your Python 3 is installed, uh, hyphen r, which I give this requirement.txt file. So it will install all these packages, right? Once it is installed, you I have also given one more script called install.sh. I'm giving just uh, the details over here, like uh, what all you need to install apart from the packages. Because I'm using NLTK, I'm using two packages from NLTK. One is is punct, which is nothing but a sentence level tokenizer. So I need to download the corpa for uh, punct, and I have to download the stop words because I am using stop words, right? Uh, now TFIDF comes inbuilt with the tokenizer and stop word. I have not used it. I have overridden it so that I can better control how my stop word and how my tokenizer needs to behave. So that's why I am downloading these two, and these two files, like uh, this, where my model is. I have stored it in a Google Drive, and as I said. I will share this information uh, in the video description and comments below. So I'm downloading the two files. One is the booster file, which is nothing but an XGBoost file. And second is a pickle file, nothing but a TFIDF uh, vectorizer over here. So these are the files over there. Now, once these two are done and downloaded, I'm going to go and build my Flask application. So in order to build my Flask application, what I am doing is I'm importing these packages. I am importing Flask. I'm importing from Flask. I'm importing Flask, JSONify, and request. Uh, JSONify is to send a JSON request, and request is to capture the request that I'm going to get from an, or, uh, from an either Postman application or a web application or even a Unix curl command. Right, and uh, the preprocessing dot function is a custom package that I have created. Uh, I'm importing tokenize. I'll show you like uh, that particular file. It's over here. Uh, so if you see over here, I have a model directory. What I have done is I have downloaded this booster file and pickle file in the model directory using the wget command. I have the NLTK. When I do an NLTK dot download or install, it's going to create a NLTK folder with the corpa and uh, tokenizer. Basically, it is the punct and it is the stop word. So it's Going to download it so those are the folders i have i have one more called pre-processing so pre-processing is a custom function that i have created so what i have done is when the tfidf vectorizer that i have created i created a custom tokenizer data cleaner and stop word remover so if i open this function.py it will have that uh, import regular expression import nltk and then i am kind of uh, uh, basically using the snowball stemmer to stem the record and then i am using the stop words over here Right, and then what I do is I create a tokenize function, and this tokenize function. Let me clear off the warnings. So this tokenize function is basically uh, going to take all the tokens, input tokens, and uh, it's going to kind of uh, it's running the tokenizer, which is the punct library we downloaded, and it's just checking if the word length is greater than three, and then it's stripping all of xxx command and everything. Right, it is just doing some cleaning over here, and then it's converting the token into lowercase. 
and then it's stemming the record and then removing the stop words from it and then returning all the uh, all the uh, finally stemmed output back to the program right so this is the tokenizer we use during our training as well so what i have done is i have created a separate file i have put it in a processing uh, pre processing folder like functions.py now in order for me to use that in my main flask application uh, what i am doing is i am telling from pre processing.functions pre processing is the folder name and functions is the file i am importing that tokenize uh, function that i created that's what i am done here then i am importing xgboost and importing joblib right joblib is basically we use joblib to pickle the uh, tfid factorizer i am importing it so that i can uh, hunt pickle it i can load back the pickled file right and then i am defining a flask application over here so it just creates a flask application and creates a flask app instance right then i am creating a target variable which is nothing but a dictionary so when my model it's a multi class text classifier so when i send an input to it it will return me a class between 0 to 5 it's a six class multi class text classifier so it will return a class between 0 to 5 now i need to know exactly what it corresponds to whether it corresponds to debt collection it's a banking compliance data set that we used whether it corresponds to debt collection or credit card mortgage checkings or savings account so in order for that what i'm doing is i'm creating a dictionary object when the model returns 0 i will call it and it will return debt collection if the model returns 5 it will return vehicle loan and lease so it just i'm giving a readable Uh, text to it rather than the numeric value so that's why i have created this target uh, dictionary object then i am importing my uh, basically tfidf vectorizer which is in the models folder from the model folder i am telling load the tfidf vectorizer and it's going to assign it to tf vectorizer object and similarly i am also loading the xg boost booster object so in the models i am uh, having the complaint dot booster i am just creating an xgb dot booster instance i am getting n thread equal to 3 so n thread is like how how much you want to parallelize your uh inference uh, computation so if for each instance i'm asking uh, basically the xg boost to create three threads because uh, if i have 1000 tree a uh, xgboost model i can execute this tree in parallel and i can get the output and add it up or or kind of sum it up or normalize it up or whether it's a softmax or sigmoid function it will do the internal functions because once the tree is trained the tree is no longer dependent as in the training process the tree is individual by itself so i can use thread to parallelize it so that's why i am creating an booster object with nthread 3 i am passing it to xgboost classifier and then telling the load model of complaints dot booster right so now i have the model object now remember one thing like when you are loading the model you always load it outside of your scoring function or predict function the, when the flask application starts this model should be loaded into your uh, application uh, memory you must not load it each time you score the record otherwise like you will have a uh, unwanted latency every time the model is getting loaded so that's why i have created it in the top as part of the uh, main app application load now next what i am doing is my uh, i need to define my flask entry point right so if you see over here when my flask application starts the main method kicks off the main method starts my flask application at uh, in this case 0.0 is the host that i am running in and 5000 is the port so it will like expose 5000 port in the local host so i can call local host 5000 i can get the data but which url i need to call is determined by this app dot route so i am telling call local host colon 5000 or 000 dot colon 5000 slash core when it calls slash code this particular predict function will get executed and i am telling method only post method is allowed it can be get method also then put comma get over here you can give multiple methods so when i say slash code this will get called in this predict function what i am doing is i am first getting the request object i am getting the json uh, basically my i am going to send the input data as a json file so i am telling request dot get json and i am getting the text column from that particular json so json will have text column when we send it and i am getting the text data over there and with the text data i am calling the scorer function on the top so in this scorer function what i am doing is i am taking the vectorizer object that i created i am i am transforming the input text so basically the input text is uh, completely uh, an a string value i need to go back and map it to the tfidf vectorizer value uh, 
uh, which, which is going to be numeric representation or encoded value of my text value. So that's why I'm calling the transform method from text value. So I have the encoded text now. I'm taking that encoded text and calling it in the XGBoost classifier.predict. So this is how our model training pipeline was. When we get an input data, we clean the data, we tokenize the data, we stem the data. And when I call this TF vectorizer.transform, it will automatically call the tokenize method because that's what it was done in the training. I customized the stop word removal, I customized the tokenizer using the tokenize function. So it will look for the tokenize function, the pre-processing as the tokenize function, it will pass it, it will get the tokenized value, it will create an uh, create an encoded text and finally it will give it to the XGBoost model to predict. In the XGBoost model what I am doing is I am creating a D-matrix object which is the default way of passing information to XGBoost and then I am passing this encoded text value and I am calling the predict. It will finally give me a score. Uh, it will give me which class it is. It's a class 0, 1, 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. I have 6 classes, right? So that's what it is. When I call the scorer.txt, it's going to send it. It's finally written me a score that is going to be a predictions. My, from the predictions, I'm getting the maximum prediction because what it's a multi-class text classifier. Every prediction that for each classes, that will be a probability score. I want only the maximum probability score, which is my actual class that I have predicted. So what I'm doing, I'm telling predictions.hargmax and I am basically uh, getting that particular uh, zeroth index and I am returning to the prediction over here. And then finally, I am returning an JSON record. Uh, basically, I am sending back a JSON response back. If, if, if I call with the text, I will get a JSON response, which has the prediction that is the actual class that it predicted 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then a category, which is nothing but an uh, human readable way. So that's the target dictionary I created on the top. So the target dictionary, I'm telling get predictions. So if get zero or uh, zero will come, then it will go in the dictionary and look what is zero. If get one will come in the argmax, it will look at what is at one index and return me that value. Right, so I'm just looking by key. Uh, the dictionary.get method looks by the key value, uh, key value that I'm getting. So in this case, key is the uh, numeric representation of my target uh, label. Right, so now I have it will return the JSON object. So now I have created my Flask application. So I need to go and run my uh, Flask application. Right, so what I can do is I can go to the command prompt at this stage. So let me open the terminal. So in this case, what I'm doing is I am using actually like a, a Google Cloud editor, but you can use any editor. This can be run as it is without any change in your on-premise, in a Jupyter notebook, in a PyCharm or in a virtual uh, visual studio code or in any editor or it can be run in any cloud platform. So that is no change to the code. I'm just using uh, my Google Cloud editor for uh, convenience here, right? So I have this. Uh, flask application created. Let me do a ls. You can see basically I have the complaint flask.py. I am a models object and whatever your data structure you are seeing on the left, you can see it here as well, right? For just, just I put some commands over here. If you are using Google Cloud, it will sometimes ask you to set the project. My project is set. If you want to set the project, you can just say Google Cloud set project and your project name. So in Google Cloud, every activity that you do is to define the project, but my project is set. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my uh, Flask application, right? So in this, to start my Flask application, I'm just going to say like Python 3. I have Python 2.7 as well, Python 3 points to the Python 3 version. So I can just say like, okay, complaints Flask.5. And once I run it, it's going to kind of go and start the Flask application. So it's, it's throwing some warning because of the TF-IDF estimator a scale on version, but that's fine. It's just a warning. It has started the Flask application. It's running on basically the 5000 port as we add for, and it's telling like this is a development server. Do not use for production deployment. That's a common warning that a Flask application gives you because the internal WSGI server that Flask, uh, Flask uh, has by default is not like production ready. So if you're looking for a lot of multi-threading concurrency and all, uh, 
uh, it's not basically it's a blocking uh, WSGA server so it will process a request by request while the latest version has some thread parameters and all but it's not very flexible and that's why you need some production ready uh, web server or application server to tie up with and that's where like GUnicorn uh, and other uh, servers comes into play uh, right so basically you will have a GUnicorn if you need a reverse proxy you can have a reverse proxy I will cover more about that in my later video right now this application is running I'm going to call this application from with a text object so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one more terminal uh, just uh, just in this case like I want to open one more terminal because this terminal the flask application is running so once I run it I'm just going to quickly go back to my history and uh, call the curl object over here so this is the curl object I'm calling I'm telling call the localhost 5000 slash core method so if you see on the top in the complaints uh, in the flask application I am routing it to slash core right so let me quickly go there if you see I'm routing it to slash core it will call this function I'm telling this one and I am passing the text object the very first thing I'm going to do is request.json of text so I'm telling like this is the text object uh, slash text it will look for that and this is the actual value within the text it's like a key value the key is the text I'm looking for the value is basically this one it says like I have a federal student loan and that is supposed to be a zero percent interest rate effective xxx over my monthly payment so that is a huge text and this xxx and everything we have cleaned it in our uh, tokenize uh, function over there that's what you saw and then finally what I'm doing is I need to tell what content type I am asking so I'm telling iPhone H content type application slash JS so once I run this, it's going to go to this Flask application, which is running on localhost 5000. Pass this text. The text is going through the score method. It's going to finally pass me the uh, result. Let me quickly run this and see like you got this output. It says the category is student loan and prediction is four. So basically the prediction is four class. And if you go here on the top, uh, the uh, target object if you see the for the prediction for its student loan and it's returning student loan and if you see over here that's what this text also say I have a federal student loan and that is supposed to be a zero percent interest effective right so this this particular complaint is talking about student loan right so that's what it did so we created a simple flask application for our text classifier we are up and running it now next question comes in okay how can i make it production ready how can i scale i may get one request per second i can get thousand requests per second i can get 10,000 requests per second my application should be able to handle, handle it right so in the future video we will see this flask application how we can take it and how we can maybe deploy it in a head or a container environment or a kubernetes environment or a serverless infrastructure and scale it as and when our request increases so that's about it this video Thank you very much.